Okay, we've uh, practiced reading these so much now that I think you should be good to go as far as how to read this next problem. So it says graph f of x equals sine of x. So here is our function to the left of the semicolon. Semicolon means what? It means w whenever, right? So sine of x whenever, here is our interval. So how do we read this inequality? Well, you should be able to do that by now, now that you're in advanced pre-calc. It'd be negative pi is less than or equal to x is less than zero. All right, so whenever x is between these two numbers, we're going to have this graph. If x is not between negative pi and zero, there will be no graph. Step one, circle the interval values. So this time the interval has two values. It has negative pi and zero. So we're going to want to put uh, points there, whether they're solid or holes or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Step two is to plug the interval values into the function. The function is sine of x, so I'm going to plug in that first value, negative pi, in for sine of x. Uh, sine of negative pi is actually the same as sine of pi, right? It's 180. Uh, and so the y value on the unit circle would be 0. So therefore, my first point is going to be negative pi, comma, 0 for step three right out the points. My second point, I'm plugging in um, 0. Sine of 0 is also 0, so my second point is 0, 0. So for step three, these are going to be my two points. So for step four, circle the relation or the relations in the interval. I have two relations here. I have a less than or equal to and a less than. So what does that tell me? That tells me that at negative pi, I'm going to have a solid point because of this bar here below the inequality. But at zero, because there is no bar, I'm going to have a hole. So solid point at negative pi, hole at zero because of the, the symbols that are next to them. The point negative pi zero is solid and the point zero zero is a hole. That's step five, which is to determine if the points are holes or solids based on these two little charts that we've been looking at. Okay, step six, uh, plot the points. So at negative pi, again, it's gonna be a solid point. Negative pi zero at zero zero, it's gonna be a hole. Uh, now, step seven is to determine additional points. Uh, the interval is your guide here. So we want to pick values in between negative pi and zero because that's what x is between. This means that you want to choose values in between negative pi and zero. Three additional points is generally a safe bet. Okay, so um, what's in between negative pi and zero? Well, the first thing that comes to mind that's just a little bit bigger than negative pi on the unit circle uh, is negative 3 pi over 4. Now actually you could choose negative 5 pi over 6 but we'll choose negative 3 pi over 4. Again we only need three points. Um, so sine of negative 3 pi over 4. Uh, if you look on a unit circle, or you should know it like the back of your hand, you should be able to picture it in your brain. Okay, So I'm not even going to pull up the unit circle. However, if you just can't picture it, feel free to ask me. Um, sine of negative 3 pi over 4 is in the third quadrant and sine will be negative there, negative square root of 2 over 2. And again, square root of 2 is 1.4, so square root of 2 over 2 is 0 0.7, so this will be negative 0 0.7. So my first point is negative 3 pi over 4, negative 0 0.7. The next x value I'm going to plug in is negative pi over 2. Again, that's in between negative pi and 0. And in, in fact, it's smack dab in between them in the middle. Uh, sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. All right, it's in between the third and fourth quadrant, so therefore my next point is negative pi over two comma negative one. And finally, just before zero, we have negative pi over four, which is in the fourth quadrant. Sine is still negative there, so therefore sine of negative pi over four is negative square root of two over two, which as a decimal you should know by, uh, by memorization by now is negative 0 0.7. So therefore the point is negative pi over four comma negative 0 0.7. Those are my three points in between. I'm going to plot them right now. Now remember my left point was already solid. My right was whole. Those are my three points in the middle that I just found. Okay, and so that's step eight is to plot the points. Step nine is to connect them. We know that sine is a wave, so this is going to be a piece of a wave. So it will be curvy. Just don't, you can go, you can touch this point, but you can't touch this hole. It's going to stop at the hole. And again, this is called piecewise functions because we just took a chunk or a piece of sine and we graphed it. Okay, and it was between negative pi and zero, not including zero. And that's it. That's it for this example, folks. If you have any other questions about it, let me know.